Well, hey everyone, Lisa Tamati here and welcome back into Pushing the Limits in my YouTube channel. And today I wanted to do a little bit of a deeper dive into CMAX, one of the peptides. I recently did another video, you know, diving deeper into a number of peptides, but I just wanted to go a little bit deeper into CMAX today to make a really short video that gives you a bit more background, a bit more of the science. And I will be linking all the clinical research below in the description as well, if you want to do a deep dive. Now, this is not for um, medical of course this is just for educational purposes and always work with a medical professional if you're doing anything with peptides uh, but this is a really exciting area for people with uh, neurodegenerative diseases uh, post uh, stroke or post concussion or, or um, other issues whether you're dealing with anxiety or any sort of neuroprotective uh, where you need neuroprotection or Alzheimer's disease so in acetyl CMAX what is it it's a synthetic heptapeptide and it has neuroprotective and cognitive enhancement properties. So research is showing its potential in preventing amyloid beta aggregation, uh, which you'll know from Alzheimer's disease, and providing neuroprotection in ischemic conditions, so like stroke, and enhancing learning and memory functions. And the peptide achieves, achieves these effects through modulation of neurotransmitter systems and regulation of inflammatory responses. Now, when we have uh, a brain injury of any sort, um, whether that's from a brain you know, injury like a stroke or a TBI or a concussion or even Alzheimer's or any of these things, there's an inflammatory response that's going on and a cascade of inflammation and immune, immune activation. And so this is helping to regulate the inflammatory response and also shows promise in the stress response and in the immune system function. So um, it's a stabilized synthetic peptide and it is uh, really beneficial for neuroprotective and cognitive effects. It's shown to prevent the formation of amyloid uh, plaque beta um, complexes with copper ions, and they, these are implicated in Alzheimer's disease, inhibiting fibrillogenesis and providing protective effects uh, against neurodegeneration. And it's been found to exert neuroprotective effects in the context of ischemic brain conditions. It enhances angioprotective anti-hypoxic, which is when you don't have enough oxygen, and neurotrophic activities, when you don't have enough growth factors in your brain, which are crucial during the acute period of ischemic uh, stroke. And CMAX administration has been associated with the modulation of inflammatory responses, promoting anti-inflammatory agents over the pro-inflammatory factors. And that's really beneficial in post-ischemic conditions. As I said, we have this cascade of inf inflammation that that happens after a brain injury so we may not see the effects immediately it may take days to weeks for the full effect of the inflammation of the immune activation cmax can be very beneficial here cmax is recognized for its nootrophic effects which include improvements in cognitive functions such as learning and memory and in animal models uh, cmax has been shown to enhance cognitive recovery in cases of chronic brain ischemia particularly when used in combination with hypertenic acid um, the mechanisms that are underlying the potential cognitive and neuroprotective effects of CMAX involve its interaction with various neurotransmitter systems and neurotrophic factors. So CMAX modulates monoaminergic systems, particularly serotonin and dopamine, which are really crucial for mood regulation. As someone who has a deficiency in dopamine and always on a mission, I know how crucial having good levels of dopamine are, and also for cognitive functions. So CMAX increases serotonin turnover and enhances dopamine release, and it can improve memory and learning. CMAX has also been observed to increase brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Now, BDNF is like fertilizer for your brain cells. It helps your neurons grow. And there is a genetic component to whether you have good BDNF levels or not. There are a number of genes that are involved in BDNF, uh, BDNF production. And then as we get older, we produce lower levels of BDNF as well. And there are a lot of uh, you know, lifestyle things that we can do to increase our BDNF, like saunas, for example. But CMAX has also been observed to increase this crucial thing called BDNF. Um, and it increases it in the basal forebrain, which is a region associated with cognitive functions. And it supports its role enhancing and enhancing cognitive abilities. Now, when it 
comes to Alzheimer's disease, CMAX is an ACTH-like peptide that has shown the ability to form stable complex with, with uh, copper 2 plus ions. And that's really crucial for prevent the formation of amyloid beta complexes, which are implicated in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease, of course. And studies have demonstrated that CMAX can inhibit fibrillogenesis, particularly in the formation of oligomeric species, therefore exhibiting anti-aggregating properties. And it's also been indicated that CMAX can enhance the survival of cholinergic neurons, all these big words I know, but at the end of the day, it's helping your brain function better. So it helps the survival of cholinergic neurons in the basal forebrain, which are known to degenerate in Alzheimer's dementia. Now, in vitro studies have shown that CMAX can increase the survival rate of the neurons by approximately 1.5 to 1.7 fold and stimulate the activity of choline acetyltransferase, which is an enzyme critical for acetylcholine synthesis. And while the exact implications of CMAX in Alzheimer's disease require further studies, further clarification, its ability to modulate uh, amyloid beta aggregation and support neuronal survival presents a really promising avenue for therapeutic development. So continued research is necessary, of course. We always need more research to explore the full potential of CMAX, including its delivery methods and efficacy in the clinical settings. What I do like about CMAX is it's not only available as a uh, injectable, so sublingual, uh, sublingual, um, a, a um, uh, subcutaneous is the word I'm looking for, injection, but also as a nasal spray. And of course, that's much easier, especially for older people, uh, if you don't want to be pricked by a whole lot of needles um, it, taking a nasal spray is a much easier way for it to get in the brain and it's efficacious that way as well so in regards to the stress response, CMAX has demonstrated significant immunomodulatory properties in models of social stress. So it effectively restores cellular and humoral immune responses, as well as the phagocytic activity of neutrophils. And that indicates its potential as an immune, immune corrector under stress. It also helps in normalizing the levels of pro and anti-inflammatory cytokines, such as, such as interleukin-1 beta, interleukin Six and TNF alpha, which are typically elevated under stressful situations in the body, whether that's infection or disease or any um, or age. As we get older, these are the aging uh, related cytokines, and we want to be um, trying to um, always be trying to get these ones down into a controllable level. We do want them in the first instance. We don't want them upregulated for too long. I've just released a formulation called Rejuvenate Pro by Avum Labs. And it's an immune based formulation that tackles this. It lowers the interleukin-1 beta, the interleukin-6, and the TNF-alpha as well, just like CMAX does, but our one does other things as well. Now, research indicates that CMAX can block the opioid form of stress-induced analgesia without affecting behavioral changes in rats exposed to acute stresses such as inescapable foot shock and forced cold water swim stress. Poor little mice. <laughs> um, don't really like these tests, but we have to do them, I suppose. This suggests that while CMAX can modulate pain sensitivity under stress, it does not alter stress-induced behavioral responses. In, in, in conditions of informational and social stress, CMAX exhibits stress protective effects by reducing stress-induced physiological changes such as adrenal hypertrophy and gastric mucosa lesions. It also shows antioxidant properties by decreasing lipid peroxidation in immunocompetent organs like the thymus and the spleen, uh, thereby mitigating stress-induced immune dysfunction. In the immune and vascular system modulation side of things, in a study on rat brain focal ischemia, CMAX was found to enhance the expression of genes related to the immune system, particularly those encoding for immunoglobulins and chemokines, which are crucial for immune cell activity and mobility. And this immune modulatory effect was further supported by research demonstrating CMAX's ability to restore cellular and humoral immune responses and phase cytic activity of neutrophils under stress conditions, indicating its potential as an effective immune corrector. In addition to its immune system uh, effects, CMAX also modulates the vascular system 
in ischemic conditions. So CMIX altered the expression of genes associated with the development and the migration of endothelial tissue, smooth muscle cell migration, hematopoiesis, and vasculogenesis. So some really exciting stuff. Look into CMIX if you want to do a, a bit of a deeper dive. I will be putting all the uh, research papers down below in the description for you to have a look at and to go a deeper dive. And I do, you know, the one of the great things about CMAX is it's pretty safe. There's not a heck of a lot that can go wrong. Um, there's no major reports of adverse side effects, but always do work with a medical professional who knows about peptides. So this was for educational purposes, for you to understand the power of some of these peptides, for you to go and do a deeper dive. I hope you enjoyed this today, and I hope you will give us a like and a subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you want to see more deep dives into particular peptides, if you've got any questions around peptides, and check out some of the links down below as well. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you again soon.